So, last year, Infinix brought the Note 30, which was a very good phone, and also one of the few phones that came with wireless charging. So then this year, like a few days ago, probably weeks, but anyways, they came out with Note 30, which is the Note 30, but way, way better. So like, if you want to know like every single bit about this phone, you have to stay to the end because trust me, it's going to be a good one. Starting off with the design, I would have to say it looks really good. I don't know if it's only me, but this one kind of looks like No 30, but has a more futuristic look to it. And I like it. I also like the color. The one we have here is black, but Infinix calls it the Obsidian Black. I like it. It's cool. The name also is cool. Yeah. Like the No 30, the camera module is glossy, so it attracts quite a decent amount of fingerprints. But I would say that's a place that you won't touch as much, so you know. Eh. But also like the Note 30, the camera bump is also huge. So it, it covers like almost half of this device. I would say Infinix definitely tried with this design. I like its minimalistic look, this, how simple it is, how clean it looks. I, love, I just love the way it looks. So I'll give it like an A++. Oh, and this one also comes with a quad ring light that shines so bright in the dark. For build, it's made out of plastic, matte plastic, but it definitely looks like glass, but it isn't. The reels, however, are glossy, so they attract quite a decent amount of fingerprints, and they're also slippery. The corners are rounded, not sharp, so it's nice for holding. The phone gives this kind of boxy feel, which is very good. The back definitely feels more expensive than it is. On the bottom, we have a Type-C port, a hybrid SIM card tray and speaker grill. Note that we have two stereo speakers on the top and the bottom and also mind you that the hybrid SIM card tray doesn't have any presence of memory expansion. Now this is a feature I really wish they didn't remove but I would say this isn't as big as a problem because you know the base model comes with 256 gig of storage so like the normal user or the average user would think this is a big enough storage for him or her to use and they also removed the headphone jack <sighs> why now this is another feature i really wish they didn't remove but also it is a feature that isn't as big as a problem because most people these days use wireless earbuds but i think that i would have really wanted to see it but you know what can we do infinix removed it and the weird part is that there is a wireless headphone in the box like what does infinix want us to do like pff, like <laughs> anyways the phone has an ip54 dust and splash resistance which is very good for you know when your phone drops into water or it catch a little bit of dust or debris it's really good for protection, it comes with an optical under display fingerprint scanner, which is really good. But because it's optical, it isn't as fast as a side mounted fingerprint scanner. But you know, it does the job, but and it's also cool. And I'll still pick this one over a side mounted fingerprint scanner. So overall, design is really good. For display, this phone comes with a 6.78 inch hole punch 1080p 120Hz display that's also AMOLED. So like, that's basically all you need in a smartphone display. The screen is large enough for you to watch content, stream movies, watch TikTok, Instagram, do all those things. And it's also 1080p which is really good for watching movies. Um, and it's also AMOLED so things will be more vibrant than it should be. The 120Hz display is also really good because you know things will be really fast. You can also switch it from 60Hz to 120Hz which is really nice. But like I know you leave it on auto refresh because you know it's great for battery life but personally I'll leave it on 120Hz refresh rate because hey if you got it why not use it right? But anyways this for screen protection it comes with Corning Gorilla Glass and for maximum brightness it comes with 1300 nits of brightness which is really bright especially because 
on the note 30 it came with 600 nits it comes with a screen to body ratio of 89.9 percent but like if i were to nitpick here i would say that this screen is too large don't get me wrong it is large enough for you to like watch content or do all the things you do while watching things but reaching across the phone with one hand will definitely be a lot difficult than it should be but I, aside from that it's really good for performance it comes with the mediatek helio g99 ultimate which as we already know is a slightly better version of the helio g99 and we've seen it in phones like the spark 20 pro plus i think that's the only phone i've seen it in but you know this is the second so that's cool it's a six nanometer processor so it can handle a lot of pressure like multitasking while doing that it's really good you can move through your favorite apps with ease and even while gaming it does its job you can play games like ashford 8 at the highest of graphics and it was even better than i expected the phone comes with 8 gig of ram and 8 more gigs of virtual ram so like that's more no that's way more than you need because like the more the ram the faster your phone will be the phone is also 4g not 5g but like if you're angry because it's not 5g looking at all its specs and the features it comes with and its price you can't really complain because you know the specs the features you can't really complain yeah but like performance is really good For software, it comes with XOS version 14 on top of Android 14. Now, I'm just going to be talking about the new things the software comes with. Like, under personalization, you can now change lock screens, clock style, font, color, and also under personalization, you can now change something called color, which allows you to change the color you see all around the UI, which is very cool. I really, I'm really glad that Infinix implemented this for cameras it comes with a 108 megapixel rear camera a 2 megapixel depth and an ai lens photos on this phone were really good i would say they're very vibrant very true to life very detailed the camera is very very impressive but like you know that if you want to shoot in 108 megapixel mode you have to change it to 108 megapixel mode in this in the camera app well, if you don't know that, you do now. Because that's what you have to do. You have to go to the settings app. No, you have to go to the camera app and switch it to 108 megapixel mode to shoot in 108 megapixels. But like most people or the normal user will still shoot in default mode, which the camera quality is already good. For video, it shoots max at 2K, which is really good. It's really detailed, really in depth. But it doesn't come with stabilization so like shooting in 1080p will actually be the best option because that one can shoot in stabilization battery life is really good it comes with the average 5000 milliamp hour battery which as we already know is really good it can last ab about a full day of use but like that's for moderate use for heavy use like streaming content doing stuff like that it should last you like probably 10 hours plus of usage but if your phone actually dies, you can charge it with the 45 watt charger that takes about an hour 10 minutes to get to fully charge. Now that is not as great because it's slow. Normal phones would take about 50 minutes because it's a 45 watt charger, maybe 50, 40 minutes to fully charge. But but like that's not even the only charging mode. There are charging modes. There's hypercharge, there's smart charge and there's low temp charge according to infinix using hypercharge could take your phone from 0 to 50 in 20 minutes that's 0 to 100 in 40 minutes which is just mind-blowing but like the main selling point is not even with any of those categories it's with charging wireless charging now if you want that wireless charge, here's how it's done. You put the phone in the case it comes with, you connect the cable to the charging pad it also comes with, connect those two together and voila, you have wireless charging. 
The phone can also charge itself wirelessly if you're asking. But that's not all. We also have a feature called reverse wireless charging which allows you to charge others phones and there's also a feature called bypass charging which allows you to charge the motherboard directly instead of the battery which prevents overheating and stops your battery from decaying which is very useful for price it comes at the price of 220 dollars and converted to naira it's 327,900 naira which shouldn't be that high but because of the naira dollar problem it is now what i think personally think about this phone is that it's a really good phone there's a lot of things to like and there's a lot of things not to like like the absence of a headphone jack and the absence of memory expansion but like display design performance battery cameras are really good if you're buying this phone you should expect a lot of good things but yeah that's my review on the infinix hot 40 i'm sorry it's been a while since i posted approximately three weeks but like this is a makeover so like thank you for watching make sure to subscribe if you're just coming in and i'll see you all in my next video